In this video, we're going to start our discussion of photosynthesis. Uh, this will be part one, uh, and this is IV section 3.8 and 8.2. And as we've talked about, cellular respiration is the process of using sugars uh, to produce ATP. It occurs through m multiple steps, but uh, we're, we're producing sugars, uh, the cell is producing sugars, um, or is using sugars to produce ATP. In photosynthesis, we're going to talk about how plants use sunlight, uh, carbon dioxide and water in order to produce sugars. And in the first part of this, we're just going to kind of get an introduction to the overall process of photosynthesis and look at some of the conditions that can affect the rates of photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is the conversion of light energy into chemical energy. Very, very simple diagram here to show this. Sunlight is used by plants, uh, water is taken in, carbon dioxide is taken in, and plants give off oxygen and then sugar. Um, as a byproduct. Uh, sunlight is composed of a range of wavelengths. We don't always necessarily see these. Uh, if there's a rainbow, we can see a reflection or the splitting of the light into the different colors. Um, but sunlight is actually composed of a couple of different wavelengths. And photos, uh, plants can use these different wavelengths uh, to photosynthesize. Uh, some of these wavelengths are used or have a higher, um, uh, a better impact overall on the rate of, of photosynthesis and the ability to photosynthesize. Um, the chlorophyll is the primary uh, photosynthetic pigment, so what's accepting the light. Um, and we can see here that red, uh, red and blue and green are some of the different colors that are used, uh, with blue being uh, or, or providing the most absorbance, followed by red, and then green is, is a secondary or a, a third. Now, photosynthesis simplified um, really, as we've said already, light energy uh, is used to produce ATP. Uh, water molecules are split by photolysis and form hydrogen, uh, oxygen, and hydrogen. So we're producing O2 um, that humans and other animals use in order to breathe. Um, and then those hydrogen ions will be used uh, throughout the process of photosynthesis. ATP and hydrogen um, from the breaking of water are used to fix carbon dioxide to make organic compounds or organic molecules. And so that ATP that's produced um, during the first part of photosynthesis and hydrogen is used to convert CO2 into actual, uh, uh, an actual sugar molecule that can be used um, or an organic compound. And so there's kind of two, two parts to photosynthesis. And the first is uh, something that we call the light dependent reaction. And then we also have the light independent reaction. Um, the light dependent reactions are right here, and this is pretty straightforward. We're producing or, or uh, the, the presence of light is necessary. It's dependent in order for this portion of photosynthesis to occur. Light is necessary. Um, it's used through a couple different uh, photosystems and electron transport chains uh, and using water produces O2, and what, what's produced during this process that's going to be used is ATP and a highly reactive mo molecule called NADPH. The second of these reactions is the light independent, and in the light independent, obviously light is not necessary, and this is the portion of the sequence of where CO2 is being used um, with that ATP and the NADPH that was previously produced in order to make sucrose or sugars and, and that's what the light independent reaction uh, entails is producing those sugars. So let's take a closer look at the chloroplast, uh, the actual molecule itself. Um, there's a couple of different parts to it. Uh, we have our outer membrane, our outer membrane here. We have an inner membrane and we have an inner membrane space, very similar to the mitochondria. Unlike the mitochondria, however, there's not the uh, tubular projections, the cristae that we saw in mitochondria. Those don't exist in chloroplasts. Um, we have these kind of little stacks, and they look almost like quarters stacked on top of each other. Um, and, and these are called uh, thylakoids. Um, and each individual little stack here is an individual thylakoid, or each one of these little quarters here is an individual thylakoid. And they can be stacked in a column like so, and we call that a granum. Um, thylakoids also have a membrane, and the inside portion uh, within that uh, thylakoid is a space called a lumen. Um, we can also see ribosomes present in the, in the chloroplasts. Chloroplasts actually do have their own DNA, uh, as do mitochondria. Um, and I think that covers pretty much most of the stuff that we'll need to, to focus on. Um, the space um, 
kind of the cytoplasm of the chloroplast, or the empty space we call the stroma uh, of the chloroplast. And so here's, this is a nice image just so you can see the different parts very easily. Here's an electron micrograph, which you'll need to be responsible for being able to identify. Um, we've got our membrane, our outer membrane. Uh, you can see a grana or a stack of thylakoids. Uh, the thylakoid membrane, it would be the exterior portion. Uh, here's the stroma. Um, this is the overall chloroplast. Uh, and this happens to be a st uh, uh, an area of starch right here, of, of sucrose uh, sugar that's being produced. Um, to, to finish up this video today, we're going to look at a couple of different factors that affect uh, the rate of photosynthesis, and the first being temperature. And temperature obviously can affect um, the rate uh, we've talked about in the past, how if uh, the temperature increases, it can increase the rate of an enzyme reaction up to a certain point. Uh, essentially the same thing with, with photosynthesis because photosynthesis is using different enzymes to, to catalyze these reactions. Um, and so with temperature, uh, as temperature increases, the rate of photosynthesis is going to increase up to a specific point. Um, uh, anything above that specific point, uh, that specific temperature, is going to cause a decrease in the rate of temperature. And that's actually a very quick decrease. So temperature can increase the rate of photosynthesis uh, pretty quickly, pretty steeply, until achieving this optimum temperature about here in this graph. And then above that temperature, uh, the rate of photosynthesis is going to decrease very rapidly. So that's our first uh, factor that can affect photosynthesis, uh, the rate of photosynthesis is temperature. The second is light intensity. And light intensity would be um, how intense that light is. Um, light has different levels of intensity. Um, fluorescent bulbs, for example, are going to be uh, a little bit more intense than, um, than to some, a lower wattage bulb. And so um, this is actually something that we could test, would be to, to look at how uh, different types of light bulbs could affect the rate of photosynthesis. And so with, with looking at this, um, the intensity is going to increase the rate of photosynthesis up to a specific point. So as the light intensity increases, the rate of photosynthesis is going to increase up to a certain point. And then at that point, um, the, the rate is going to basically plateau. It doesn't continue to get higher um, as the intensity of the light increases. Uh, the rate of photosynthesis will increase up to a specific point. And the rate of photosynthesis is proportional to the intensity of the light at low and medium light levels. So at lower or medium light levels, the actual rate of photosynthesis is going to be proportional. So for however much the light intensity increases, uh, so will the rate of photosynthesis up again to this specific point. And the last factor that we're going to look at that can affect rate of photosynthesis is carbon dioxide. And when we say carbon dioxide, we mean how much carbon dioxide, um, how much is present. And very similar to light intensity, increase of concentration of CO2 of carbon dioxide is going to increase the rate of photosynthesis up to a specific point. Um, again, just like as we saw in light intensity, it's going to increase until um, it basically plateaus. Um, and photosynthesis cannot also occur well, when there's very low levels of carbon dioxide. Um, if we think about what is going in or what's go what are the inputs for this product, CO2 is necessary in order to form that sugar in the light dependent, uh, excuse me, the light independent portion of the overall process. And so if there's no CO2, we can't produce sugars, and, and so it's not going to be able to work. Um, so overall, CO2 uh, will affect the rate of photosynthesis up to a certain point. Um, and it'll eventually plateau um, uh, when, when the rate of uh, the amount of CO2 reaches kind of that highest level. Um, in our next couple of videos, we'll continue to look at actually the specific steps of photosynthesis and look at the light independent and light dependent portions of photosynthesis in more detail.